Hey, 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 welcome to another episode of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, joined as always by Big Show. Show, how are you? I'm all right. I get through these technical difficulties, but we're all right. Uh, you just got to love that technology, don't you? Yes, sir. So I, I just saw this. I, I literally ran across from this before I logged in. So I want to go over this with you. Um, okay. It by no means is there another Batman movie coming out. There's no script for it or anything other than the Robert Pattinson. But okay. should uh, Warner Brothers decide to go with an older, wiser, more seasoned Batman? Apparently, we have five guys that are in the running. Those five guys are Jensen Ackles, uh, which you may probably know from uh, Supernatural, Jake Gyllenhaal, mm -hmm. Alan Rickson, Winston Duke, and Glenn Powell. What do you think about these uh, five guys? Uh, let's just break them down, starting with the first one. You, you think Jensen Ackles Strong would pass. be a good one? Strong pass. Okay. Um, I don't know. I'm on the fence with him. I'm on the fence. Uh, second one, Jake Gyllenhaal. That's a strong pass for me. It, for me, he's 50-50 just because he's a pretty good actor. Um, but do I see him as Batman? I mean, but I didn't see Robert Pattinson as Batman either. So I could see him as a Cape Crusader, but he would not be my choice. Okay. Alan Rickson. This one is interesting because he want him. can play yes. Batman. Oh, yeah. He, he can, can play brood, the he old can brawl. Yes. The buff, naturally buff dude. I think he plays as uh, Jack Reacher. He, he's in a, yeah, in a streaming series. Where, yeah, Reacher. Yeah. Very good show. Uh, good actor. I think he would be a good fit. I'm going to say no on Winston Duke. Um, I don't care for any more race or gender swapping in roles, period. It just doesn't work. Could it um, work? Yeah, but I don't want – I I, I think he, he can do something else. Good actor. Let's put him, nothing wrong with him. Let's put, let's put him as the black Superman. That could work. I can see that better than I can see Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, most deaf. And then Glenn Powell, I think he's just the new thing. Everybody liked him in Top Gun. Everybody likes Twisters. But he hasn't shown me that he can be Batman. He looks like a Timu version of Chris Evans. <laughs> well said. Well said. Um I'm not even going to go above and beyond that. I can't, I can't, I can't beat that. All right. So just rounding it out, uh, we're, we're switched on uh, Jensen Ackles and Jake Gyllenhaal. We're both all in on uh, Rickson. Yes. I think he'd be good. Okay. All right. So this is the part where I tell you guys at home, let us know who you think of these five guys should be Batman. Drop us a comment. Or send us an email at the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com. Uh, how you been handling that heat still there, show? Um, not too bad. Trying to get my workouts done in the morning before it gets too hot. But for the most part, you know, just staying indoors. I I commend you on that. Um, I unfortunately cannot get anything done whether it be a run or a workout before I go in, because I'm at work at 6.45 in the morning. So it's still dark when I want to get out there and run. Um, I have to wait until 6.45 in the evening if I'm going to go for a run so that, you know, I can get those miles in just before the sun goes down, but at the same time, avoid the heat of the day. Yeah. Uh I tried doing that in the evening time, and it just, no, I just, I'm able to do it in the morning, so I just made it work in the morning. Hey, more power to you. I wish I could be like that. Uh, that, would, that would go a long way to help with consistency, too. You've got a set routine. I tell you what we are going to do for consistency for the Facebook fitness group change. 
Uh, you heard it here first, literally. There's going to be a contest coming up in September. It's going to run 60 days, so it will run all of September and all of October. Uh, details will be coming up, and uh, there will be three prizes given out uh, for uh, people that uh, either finish. I don't want to say win because I'm leaning towards, you know, more or less consistency. Wins. Yeah, everybody wins. But uh, it may be something in the way of a drawing. Um and, and you just have to, you know, finish to be eligible for the drawing. Um, because there's going to be a couple different things involved. And I want everybody to have fun with it. I don't want it to be a I'm better than you competition. I want it to be something where we lift each other up. So be on the lookout for that. There is going to be more coming up on that uh, over the next few weeks. Good deal. Okay. Um Deadpool. You saw Deadpool and Wolverine. What did you I think? Go see it last Friday. Um, overall, like you said last week on the show, and I'm sorry, guys, if the spoiler alert, you know, sound the alarm. We're going to talk about the show. So yes. if you don't want to know about it, just mute us or stop listening. <clears throat> but like you said last week, um, if you if you're an all out um superhero type person in the movies definitely a, a movie you should watch i i do think the overall plot was kind of hokey but it's deadpool so it made sense if that makes sense mm -hmm. i mean it's kind of cheesy um i think they took some easy way out to explain some things in the past but it's deadpool so you know the the nor the net the normal rules do not apply uh, in his true. universe. Um, but I, I liked it for the most part. I'd say it's a good solid B minus A as a superhero movie. Very entertaining. Yeah. It was very entertaining. And yeah, uh, during during our talk about this, at the bottom of your screen, I will have spoilers on there. So until that comes down, keep us muted. Um, I want to talk about three aspects of the movie. Uh, first, the intro of the movie when Loved he it. uh when he took uh Logan's bones and just beat the crap out of everybody in the TVA, that was Loved amazing. It. That was amazing. Uh, secondly, I know there's a lot of with cameos, the and with yeah, the instinct song "Bye Bye Bye" in the background. I mean, that's what exactly. he was beating, every, killing everybody too. So yes, great. And in sync likes that too. Uh, their royalty rates have gone up. As a matter of fact, if you look online, it's no longer called Bye Bye Bye. It's called Bye 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 from Deadpool and Wolverine. Ah, sweet. Just to capitalize, I suppose. Okay. So the other thing, I know everybody was into all the cameos, and we can talk about that if you want, but I liked all of the different Wolverines from uh, all the timelines. Uh, I did too. I mean, the little short Hugh Jackman, that's that's an in-your-face to everybody who said, oh, he should be short. Wolverine is short. Yeah, I couldn't take him seriously if he was that short. I really couldn't. Uh, we got the right guy for the part. I like the fact that they put Patch in there. Uh, he, he was a good one. They had uh, the brown-suited Wolverine, my favorite one, with the uh, one fighting the Hulk. And I didn't even think that they were going to put that really feral Wolverine in there with the wild hair, missing the arm, just beating the crap out of Ryan Reynolds. Um, mm -hmm. I, I liked all those variants. And I liked the one that they want the, they want the guy to replace Wolverine, pl replace you, Jackman. Uh, uh, yes. I liked that one as well. Um, my I think my favorite cameo was Chris Evans because you just knew he was Captain America, and until he and said when flame he, on, <laughs> when he said flame on, I died laughing. I thought that was so great. Um, to put that in there, I thought that was so cool. Um, I could have done without Electra and and and, and Wesley Snipes's 
Uh, I, don't, I don't think Blade, Blade was bad, but, and, and I didn't mind Elektra in there because it kind of did her justice, you know, for those horrible movies that came out back in the day. I tell you what, though, you brought up Johnny Storm. I really like the uh, end credit scene because all the time I thought, man, Deadpool just threw him under the bus. How are you going to throw a dead man under the bus like that? But it really was him. <laughs> And it was yep. talking all that smack. Yes. That was great. Oh, yeah, the very end one. I got what you're saying. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, the very last credit scene. Yes, that was pretty dope. That I it was it, I didn't like the the evil twin sister oh, of Professor Xavier. Cassandra. Yeah, I didn't like her character. Um, I thought all the Deadpools that came out, uh the group of Deadpools. Mm -hmm. pretty cool and come to find out that the lady deadpool is his wife in real life yeah. and both of his both of his kids played uh the younger yeah. deadpools um i thought those were pretty neat um i got a kick out of uh when he played nice pool and he's like just regenerate what, re what <laughs> right <laughs> the only one that couldn't regenerate <laughs> they couldn't regenerate yep uh it was good Had i i mean it was good Although I thought they were going to tie more of the multiverse in and bring in uh, re avenues of such as Fantastic Four and things like that. The cameos I was expecting weren't the cameos that we got, but I'm not unsatisfied with the cameos that we got. Yeah, because they did set it up for different cameos at the beginning, because when he applied, if you want to use that word, to become an Avenger, um. I thought, oh, we're going to see some Avengers in this movie. I mean, yes, we did see Thor for half of a half of a second. And uh, that's going to be interesting because uh, that's when Deadpool will actually die, I guess. Wink, wink. Um, somewhere down the line. Deadpool never dies. Oh, I'm thinking Secret Wars, maybe. He can't die. It's impossible for him to die. That is true. He's, uh, he's he, practically he shares immortal. the same fate as Wolverine. They they can't die, except for you know our timeline Wolverine because they put something in the food to kill all the mutants. Act Wolverine actually can die. He doesn't have the same regeneration powers as as that's right. As, it is different uh, than Deadpool. uh, Deadpool's. Uh, Deadpool can actually regenerate from just a drop of blood. Basically, Wolverine can't do that. No, no. But, but in the comic books, there is a whole storyline where Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe. He kills every superhero in the Marvel Universe. So I'm curious if in the future, if they'll ever do something like that. Don't hold your breath, buddy. I'm still waiting on or like a Hulk. Or like a dream. Like a dream, you know? Like mm. being Ryan Reynolds, he could be dreaming that he's killing him and wake up and, you know, be a joke or something, you know? I can see him doing like that. I can see him doing that, too. Um, overall, and, and I'll take the spoiler alert down, but I want to know... First off, have you seen the first and the second Deadpool? Yes. Okay. How would you compare it to the Deadpool one and Deadpool two? I'd rate it right up there. I, uh, Deadpool one was by far my favorite, just because it was the perfect introduction of the character. Um, I do like two as well. Uh, they're they're all basically right on the same tier for me. They're all perfect for that particular character. Yeah. Um, I'm a big Wolverine fan, so I, I, I rank this one above Deadpool 2, uh, close to the first one, 1 and 1A. That first one, though, will always hold a special place because the originals of everything, are, 9 times out of 10, are always the best. I won't say everything because I can name some movie franchises where the second movie was better than the first. Oh, uh, yeah. Most deaf. We've talked aliens, the Empire Strikes Star Back, Wars, Empire Strikes Back. Yep, yeah, uh, uh Terminator 2. Yeah, uh, so that's I like Terminator 2. 
I, I mean, like it too, but that's tough to say it's better than Terminator 1. You know what? I, I, I compare it with Alien and Aliens. Two different films. The first Alien movie is a horror movie. The second one is an action film. So they're two different things, even though it's the same world, same universe and all that. Terminator and Terminator 2, the first one was more of a horror movie. The second one is more of an action movie. Um, I didn't I didn't see the first one as a horror movie, though. I didn't get, I don't get that from it. It, it, it was kind of like a, yes. a budget sci-fi horror movie. Mm, we, we, we'll just have to agree to disagree on that one. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they were all good, though. I think we can agree on that. True, most definitely. Um, I was going to say, oh, I really enjoyed the fact that he was in the comic book. Wolverine was in the comic book uh, costume, with the yes. exception. To when he actually pulled up his cow, I thought that was the most hokey looking cow in live action I've ever seen in my life. I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it. Um, I didn't. I'm not saying I mind. It. I just thought it was pretty hokey looking, pretty cheesy. Yeah, uh, and when you think about it, though, how can you make his cow better for live action? It's pretty out. Th- it's I mean, pretty out there. It is. I mean, but no different than Batman's cow. Yeah. It's way out there. Just I think they just made it too wide, I guess. I don't know. But I mean, but it was fun to see him in it. Yeah. Keep in mind though, Batman has had what 80 years to perfect the cow for live TV and movies. So okay. even though Batman does not have the white eyes yet, Batman needs the white eyes. If any superhero mask needs the white eyes, it's Batman. Can't say it can't be done anymore. Deadpool's used it for three movies. Um, Spider Man uses Spider Man, yeah, and and now Wolverine. Um, damn good movie. Can't wait till it comes out on uh, DVD, Blu Ray, all that because it'll go in the collection library. I mean, hey, why not? I got to show off yeah, that sound system. Good. It was good. Have you uh, been watching any of the them there Olympics? Oh yeah, I'm, pro- I'm probably pretty much done watching them. I know they run until Saturday or Sunday, uh, um, because I mainly watch. I like to watch. I like to watch some of the racing, the track and field. Uh, I think maybe the two hundreds are are tonight the finals i don't know but yeah i've been watching it i I mean short answer yes i've been watching what do you think of the 100 meter men's final i thought that was fantastic i thought that was fantastic that if i'm correct all eight finishers were within one what eighth of a second or something like that yeah it was that yeah the slowest the guy that came in last would have beaten Carl Lewis's 1988 gold run. Mm. Wow. That's how fast that says something. Moving. That yeah. says something right there. Um, I think, let's see, I think I have it right here on my phone because it was the, somebody posted it on Facebook. Um, oh, the finish? I stole it. But. No, of that Carl Lewis, 1988, he won first place, 9.925. The last place finisher was 9.915. Mm. So the slowest guy would have beaten Carl Lewis. Carl Lewis wouldn't even been in that race. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Uh, the training has come a long way since then. Conditioning, I know. Uh, True that. People are more enhanced. I'll just leave that at that. I'm not going to get this into legal and illegal things. Um, you can just look at today's athlete but, compared but, to. Okay. Oh yeah, but but to see <clears throat> to see the human body perform at the highest level that those eight or nine competitors did was was great and 
you know, it came down to a photo finish for mm -hmm. first, second, and third. And when you thought that, uh, was it Noah Lyles, the guy that won yeah. it? He's um, the winner, yeah. Yeah, I didn't think that he won it. I had to actually, I thought the Jamaican, the other Jamaican guy won it because his foot crossed first but i didn't realize that's not the rule it's the torso torso the torso comes in first mm -hmm. and yeah by by literally a nose uh no allows wins yeah great race great race yeah as a former track athlete that we that was the first thing we learned that's why you see so many people lean at the finish line mm -hmm. no matter what place they're in that's just how we were taught to cross the line period uh, so that's a good rule. It sucks, but you know, eventually it was going to have to come up. I just oh, didn't yeah. think it would come and up in this spectacular of a way. Well, it it's not the first race that it's been that close. Let's let's just say it, it's there's been other races that have been close like that. Um, yeah, but usually they're both leaning, and somebody but... just nips the other person. In this particular case. One person's foot was ahead of the other person's torso, but their torso was ahead of their torso. So True that. It, it's just really weird. Uh, and I so, think that's where that Jamaican runner uh, had the disadvantage because he was so flipping tall. Yes. Yeah. And, and there's nothing he can do that. That foot was going to get there before versus, the body. Yeah. Yeah. I think that hurt him. Now, just to switch uh sports you know last night mm -hmm. uh i witnessed one of the major controversies in the gymnastics it was the women's uh floor final <clears throat> floor exercise final and um <clears throat> simone biles and uh childs uh i forget her first name Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, and then Andrade, she's the, she's the Brazilian version of um, Simone Biles. Mm. She uh, Brazil won the gold, and Biles was in silver. Romania was in third after Ch and Charles went last. Charles did her routine, and she ended up being fifth and did medal. But the mm. American coaches uh, contested with the judges that they did not judge her routine correctly. Now, this is after Romania's chick has already put on her flag and is super excited that she won bronze. Mm -hmm. They the the judges decided that they that the coaches were correct and gave wow uh, Childs uh, one tenth approval up and that beat that put her from fifth to third and you see romania rejoicing and then you see the complete heartbreak it was emotionally hard to watch happy see, for america but it was it's pretty a pretty controversial and emotional thing to see <clears throat> i have not been watching the olympics so this is the first i heard of that wow um and I think uh, that, you, you hate think, to see that happen. You hate to. Yeah, and I think the part of it too, if I'm not mistaken, it would have been the first time Romania has meddled in that single event in quite a few years. And this mm. particular, the particular athlete, her mom, um, back in the '80s, was, I think, Dominique Kamin Kaminci for Romania that that mm -hmm. used to win all the golds and was a, a multi gold champion in that floor exercise and it was her daughter that got screwed oh so wow she she let she let the yeah. she let the olympic people know about it she tweeted and everything this morning but it was pretty emotional to see but you know gymnastics the ladies did their thing um it was fun Hey, I want to go back to tr one more track and field thing. This will be the field okay. version. How about that mm -hmm. pole vaulter? I forget his name, but he was almost ready to medal. 
but he hit the bar going over. Uh, With his junk? Is that the one you're yeah, talking about? that's the one. Yeah. Uh, he ain't going to have to worry about a date, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he got didn't a bunch win a medal, at his DS. but yes. Oh, yeah, he did. Oh, yeah, he yeah. did. He won a medal. <laughs> Just a different guy. <laughs> right? Right. He got, um, he got a he got a new set of fans. Yeah, and there may be some endorsements down the road. There you go. Can, can you see I, him uh, with a male enhancement <laughs> company? <laughs> I thought you were going to talk about uh, the Paul Walter that last night that broke the world record. I uh, again haven't watched, so I had no idea about that. Uh, so I don't even know what the record was for pole vaulting. Um, uh, 60 meters, I think, was the record that he had to beat. How many feet is that? I fuck because I, I always thought it was in feet. That that tells you how much I know about pole vaulting. Let's see. I'm gonna look that up real quick because I, I could be talking that side of my face here. Okay, because for some oh. reason I just remember a Russian back in the day pole vault 19 something, but again, I could be wrong. I think his name was Sergey. Okay, 6.25 meters. Okay. Which, let's see how many feet that is. I want to say it's probably normally in meters you do two times two or two times point two point two. So it'd be like 12, 13, 14 feet somewhere in the arena. Oh, okay. Okay, that that, that uh, sounds about right. Six point two five meters. I mean, you could feet. you could tell me it's ten feet and I'd believe it because I, I don't know. Oh I, it's twenty feet six point zero six three inches. Okay, so I was close when I said nineteen something. So he broke the record, huh? Yeah, last night. And he had already won the gold. And they and okay. He so still, he was just, he, he was just going the, for broke then. Okay. Yeah, he had he had one more jump, and and he had already won the gold because and he was like his dad is his coach. His dad said go out there and break that record, and he went out and broke it. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong. And with he's that. from I think I think his country was Sweden, but he actually went to college at LSU with Shakiri Richardson. Hmm. Um, so he lives in Louisiana, but he he medaled for Sweden. For Sweden. I believe. Nice. I'm gonna double check. I'm gonna double check that. His name is Armand Mondo Duplantis. Well, Armand, yes, hats off to you. You're a record holder and an Olympic gold medalist now. Nice. Yeah, he missed um, it on his first attempt, but got it on his second. Cool. So, um, I know we're uh, winding it up here soon. So, I want to go to uh, season two of Game of Thrones. Okay. Um, first off, you already know what I think about it based on what I said about last week. Season two, everything started to pick up because I have finally realized who everybody was. And now it's just a matter of different quests. Or who's got to do what, get where, and all that. So the story is starting to form together. And there were a few uh, additions uh, as well. I, I did find the second season much more entertaining. Uh, again, because I knew what was going on. Uh, just by virtue of not being ignorant to everything, uh, I looked forward to it. It, uh, it made more sense. And it's what got me uh, embodied into it. How did you feel about the second season? I liked it. Um, <clears throat> this, it, it. It progressed and fit well, um, mainly with the books uh, or with the second book, I should say, um, yeah. Clash of Kings. And you know another spoiler alert not that it is but 
season <laughs> three and yeah. season three and four starts deviating from the books. And then the rest of the seasons haven't basically went somewhere else because George R. R. Martin wasn't part of the um, production side. But this basically initiates the Clash of the Kings of the Five Kings. I think you mm-hmm. had uh, what you had Robert Star- Rob Stark, you had yes. Joffrey, you had Stannis Baratheon, you had Renly Baratheon. And I'm missing the fifth king off the top of my head. Uh, Targaryen. But, oh, yeah. There you go. Um, well, it wouldn't be Viserys, but it would be uh, Daenerys. Daenerys. Yeah. <clears throat> so <clears throat> it basically sets all that up. You get to see Theon go back to his dad and the Pike Island and realize that his dad doesn't like him basically calls him a Stark because yeah, he was his the dad Lord was cruel. Of Ed, Sir. I well, mean, that whole, the that whole island is cruel. The Iron Islands? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's when, and then also, you know, you we get introduced to Tywin Lannister, which is Cersei's dad and, and Jamie's dad and Tyrion's dad. I love that character. I think he's, he played that part beautifully. Uh, yeah. I, I, Ira's on the run. She's basically a, well, they call her a cupbearer for Tywin and Hannah Hall. Hannah, uh, Castle, Hannah Hale Castle, whatever it is. Right. The one that burned, the one that burned down and is haunted. Um, I, I, it, it was really good. Um, I really liked the, the, the Battle of Blackwater. I thought that was pretty good. Uh, the way they did it. Um, overall, definitely better than one. Yeah. What was your now, favorite part of it, of that season? I don't know per se if I had a favorite part because I was getting into it all. I, just talking about Daenerys, though, I could see where. I thought it was going to be headed with her. You know how she, you know, took over and was uh, starting to, uh, who are the guys that she, um, the, the tribe that she married into? Uh, the uh, Dothraki. Dothraki, thank you. Um, I genuinely thought that she was going to be the underdog to uh, end up on the throne in the final. I mean, this was back during season two's original run. Who knew it was going to even last eight seasons or anything like that? So I'm just thinking, oh, yeah, she's the underdog. She's getting ready to do these big things. She's going to make it happen. She's got control of this tribe. All she has to do is find a way to get a foothold um, and I don't remember if this was in season two or not. Who Who is the knight that always used to help her that was in love with her? Mormont. Yes. Jorah. Did, did, did he... I'm trying to think. He didn't... He hadn't betrayed her at that time yet, had he? Theoretically, yes, but we didn't know about it. Okay. Okay, so I'm I'm getting ahead of myself, so I'm just going I'm gonna leave that at that. But uh, her stories but always intrigue me. But in season two, she you know she lost most of the Dothraki when Khal Drogo died. They all left her, so she was basically left with like four or five warriors, and the rest of them were old women, sick, old men, sickly, and the young, those who followed her. Um, because they seen the power of the dragons, and this is the one where she didn't know where to lead them. So that that they so she was like in that desert area, and she yes. sent her her warriors out in each direction. The one came back with his head cut off. Remember that? Yeah, on the yeah. on the side of the of the of the horse, mm-hmm. and I think this is when they get introduced to Karth. Karth. Karth, I think that's the name of the city. 
uh, with the warlock with the blue lips and the big black yes. dude. Yeah. Um, so that's that's in that's where she first. That's the first city she she encounters, and this is where she first uh, ends up breaking the slaves, I believe, freeing the slaves. The breaker of chains is what they call her. Yeah, yeah. I, okay, that that makes sense then. Uh, but her next... story kind of took a backseat just because the main part of this was setting up for future series like um, Aya with the Jekka Jagar, I think is his name is. He was the yeah. one that now gave her, her three. Her story, her story intrigued me as well. Yeah, th this, you know, where he told her, give me three names. You know, you saved me three names, three kills for three lives, whatever. Yes. And then later on, he's the guy that teaches how to be uh, the the man of no faces or whatever. Yeah. So now we we uh, will uh, conclude season two and get into season three next week. Uh, we're gonna get out of here today. We're gonna do more Game of Thrones next week. All right. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. That's all the time we have for today. But we will see you again next week. Stay positive. Stay blessed. <laughs>